Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the LEGB rule and the concept of scope in Python. The LEGB rule tells us how Python resolves names. That means that whenever we use a name in an expression in Python, uh, the language needs to find out what is the value associated with that name to do anything useful. And the LEGB rule tells us how Python finds the value associated with a name. And the scope of a name follows entirely from the LEGB rule. So we don't need to spend a lot of time talking about the concept of scope because the LEGB rule tells us almost everything we need to know about scope in Python. And LEGB stands for the order names are looked up in. It stands for local and closing, global and built in. And those are the namespaces that Python looks for a name in order. And we will learn more about what exactly that means. So now let's look at some code. Here we have code where uh, we define a equals 5, b equals 2, and we have a function a plus b where we define a again and then we return the result of adding a plus b. And we print the result of calling a plus b and we also print the result of adding a plus b at the script level. So let's see what happens when we call a plus b. We go into the function and we have this expression here where we return a plus b. And to perform this addition, Python needs to find out what are the values associated with both A and B. Otherwise, there's nothing useful to do, right? So Python needs to find out what, what is A. And Python goes looking. And a function, as we have it here, A plus B, defines its own local scope defines a local scope. So right now we are locally here and Python goes looking first locally. And it looks from bottom to the top. It goes in the upwards direction. So it will start here and it will go upward and it will find A right here. And it will say, okay, A equals three and it terminates the search, it's done. It's done searching. So it will never find this A globally on top right here because it's also defined locally. The local assignment will be found first and Python is done. Now it needs to find B. And B is not defined locally. D is only defined globally. So Python will go searching for B. It will go upward. It will not find it locally. So it will go one step higher and there's no enclosing. There's no enclosing functions right now. So it will go straight from this local namespace to the global one. And here it will find B it will find b equals two. So now we have a equals three and b equals two. So that's three plus two and that's five and that's the output that we got. So Python, this is how Python resolved these names for now. But then at the global, at the script level, when we add a plus b, Python also goes searching. But we are already in the global namespace. We are already right here. And the LEGB lookup goes only in one direction, it only goes from left to right. And that means that Python will go looking for A, but it will never go searching in this local namespace. It will never look inside the function. It will go searching for A and it will never find this local one, but it will first find this one up here, where A is defined as five. Then it will go looking for B, and here B is defined as two, so we have five plus two, which equals seven, and that's the output we got. And this is why um, the local namespace um, constitutes its own scope. It's um, when we start out in the global namespace, the local, neither the local nor the enclosing namespaces are ever searched for the value of A. The LEGB rule is only followed in one direction from left to right, look from local to enclosing to global to build in. And we will now learn more about the enclosing, um, the enclosing namespace in an example right here. So here we have another example, um, a very contrived one because usually I highly recommend against uh, enclosing functions and other functions, but here we do it for the purpose of demonstration. So we have the function enclosing and we have the function local and at the script level we call enclosing. So when we call enclosing, we go into enclosing and then at some point we call local. So we go into local here 
And in local, we want to print a plus b plus c. And just like before, we need to resolve the value of a. So we go looking again. We're locally here within this function, and it's just called local just for uh, to make it easier. But it could be, of course, any function can be called anything. So we're looking here for a, and we find it locally here. I am local a. That's what it's assigned to, and the search for A is terminated, we're done. We found A, now we need to look for B. With B, we are not finding locally. So we go one step higher. We go from local to enclosing. So now we're at the enclosing namespace. So, and here we find B. B is I am enclosing B. That's great, we found B. Now we need to go looking for C. And C, we don't find locally. We don't find in the enclosing namespace even. But now we go from enclosing to global. And there we find C. C is uh, I am global C and uh, that terminates our search. So now we have A plus B plus C, we have the local A, we have the enclosing B and we have the global C and this is exactly what was printed out. Now we have, um, we also um, call A plus B at the enclosing level. And here the same rule applies because the LEGB rule is only followed in one direction um, the enclosing, when we call uh, an expression at the enclosing level, um, the local level is never looked up. So A, it finds the enclosing A instead of the local A, finds the enclosing A and it finds the enclosing B first. It never looks up this local A. And this is exactly the printout that we would expect from the LEGB rule. Now you're probably saying, okay, we talked about local and closing and global, but what about built-in? So let's look at an example that illustrates the built-in namespace a bit. So here we have we have a list and we call the len function on that list and we print the length of that list. But I'm doing something here that um, uh, you, you shouldn't do yourself. I redefine the len function and then we print the length of my list here again after redefining it. And here we call a special name. We call a special name that is underscore underscore built-ins underscore underscore. And this is exactly the built-in namespace. And this is the last place where Python looks for a name. After it did not find the, na um, the name in the global namespace, it will go looking for the built-in. And built in, you can look uh, look up what is in built in yourself by calling the dir function on built ins, and you will find that in the built ins namespace there are all the functions that you usually know from that you are just able to call right when you start Python. There's a lot of functions in Python that you can just call when you start it, and you don't need to define yourself. They are included. They are literally built into Python. And one of those functions is the len function. And one thing I'm doing here is, so first we call print and we call, um, we want to get the length of my list. And this works perfectly as we would expect. We get the output three, there are three items in, in my list. And that's because when we call this expression, len, um, Python goes looking again. Python needs to find out what is assigned to len. And it doesn't find it in the global namespace because it, we didn't define it anywhere, right? But after it looked in the global namespace, it goes looking in the, the built-in namespace. It goes looking right here. And there it finds the normal built-in len function and it uses it as we will expect to cal calculate that there are indeed three items in this list. But now what I'm doing here is I overwrite the len function. I define my own len function. And this is a len function that, um, that essentially breaks the functionality we would expect from the original len function. It, it just prints out something and it actually tells us that, um, that this is not the built-in len function, but it's a global one that I define myself and it interferes with the built-in len function. And when we then call this len function on my list, we just pass it uh, my list, but my list is completely ignored here. All the arguments are ignored and it just prints out the string that I give it. And that's because now when Python has the len function here, it goes looking. 
and at first it goes it looks from it just goes up it goes looking for the len function and it finds it right here it finds the len function uh, in the global namespace and it uses it it passes my list to it and it does what the function is supposed to do it prints out this this string so now you might think oh well oh now the len function is it's overwritten it's gone right we assign a different name, it vanished. But that's not entirely true. The original len function is still in built-ins. We just defined a new function at the global level. We defined another function at the global level that also happens to be called len, but we can still call the original len function by explicitly going into the built-ins namespace, look, going for len, and passing it my list and it's exactly the same functionality we always expect from the len function. So this illustrates the built-in namespace and it also illustrates again we start here at the global level we find the name at the global level and we're done. But the original function in built-in still exists here. It's just never found if you call the len function from the global namespace because the search terminates as soon as we find, as soon as we first encounter the name len. Now one more thing that's noteworthy is that functions are one of the things that create its own local scope, but there's, there are two more things in Python 3 that create their own local scope. And one of those is the class, ob the class object. Classes constitute their own uh, local scope, but they behave not perfectly as you would expect from the um, from the function. Specifically, what we have to uh, realize is that instance methods like these ones I define here for my class do not look up by default names that are in the class body. And this is unexpected because usually we would expect it just to move upwards, but this is not how it works, unfortunately. It's not how it works entirely. So we have this my class here and let's see what happens here when we, when we, for example, when we print A, because we are at the global namespace, we just find A at the global namespace. We never look for this A in the class body because my class, as I just explained, has its own local scope. But now we create an instance of the my class object and we call the method print global A. We, we call this method we want to print a and from what we've learned so far you would expect that this a just moves upwards because my you would think my class is enclosing to this function to to this method but it is not so a is not looked up uh, instance methods do not look up the class body by default it would straight go up to the global namespace and find a here so it prints the glo i'm global a However, there, you can, if you want to access names in the class body, you can of course do that. I mean, the, uh, there is a good use case and there is a purpose for calling class attributes as they are called, but you have to do it explicitly. So you have to go my class dot a, and this is how you can find this a in the class body. You have to do it explicitly. It's not looked up automatically. Then finally in Python, there's only one more a construction that really creates its own local namespace and this is the list comprehension. So this A will be assigned to zero, to one, to two, to three and so forth. Th but this happens in, in a, a separate local namespace. So when we print A, the A that's defined in here to uh, zero, to in the end, it's assigned to 10. This, is, this A is not found, it's only locally. So A is found first up here. I am global A. However, for loops that are not part of a list comprehension, their assignment statements uh, become part of the global or whatever is enclosing them. They bleed into the, into the namespace that is enclosing them. In this case, we use this for loop just in the global namespace. And in there, B becomes assigned and B becomes part of the global namespace. So when we print B, it really finds this B that was last assigned to nine. It does find it. So 
For loops do not create their own local namespaces. The assignment at the top of a for loop bleeds into the um, into the uh, enclosing namespace, and this enclosing namespace here happens to be the global one. The global one uh, for this for loop happens in the global namespace. So with this, we actually have all the constructions in Python, all the, the major ones that create their own local scope. And by knowing which one, which objects create their own local scope, and those are the functions, classes, and list comprehensions, and by knowing the LEGB rule, we essentially always know the scope of a name. Now, the major thing we need to remember is names are always resolved in one direction, from local to enclosing to global to built in. And functions, classes, and list comprehensions create local scopes. However, we need to remember the important exception that instance methods do not look for names within the class body. With that, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.